with a new tutorial today. Um, today we're going to be doing a dispersion splash kind of tutorial um, where I show you how to create the effect using clipping masks. It's very easy and it's going to be very quick. Um, and I've seen this effect done throughout YouTube and this is pretty much going to be my take on it. If you're wondering why I sound like I'm dying, I'm not dying. I just have a really nasty cold. Um, so let's just get started. I've opened up my stock here and I thought an action like moving stock would be really appropriate for this effect. It just look way cooler if you have like a dancer stock for example. So beginning with your background, the first thing I do I would recommend you create a new layer and download some splashing brushes and all you have to do is go into Google and type in splash brushes and pretty much you get a lovely set of free brushes that um, are pretty much splashes and I'll just do a few random ones so you can see what they look like and this is pretty much we're going to be what we're going to be using today to create our dispersion effect so um, let's delete those um, so after you've created your new layer it doesn't matter what color you've got because we're going to be making these into clipping masks if you're not familiar with them I will be showing you how to do them so finding my splash brushes I'm going to start off with some nice big splashes on the picture and these are going to be kinda random but you want to create some nice flow to it so I'm just going to be doing some around her hair um, you know around her pants it's, a, it's pretty much exactly how you would like it we can fix these up later with the eraser tool as well so there's nothing to be worried about um, and then I'm going to use some different splash brushes on the same layer just because I don't want the same splatter repeated like 50 times it just looks really fake and we want this to look really cool so I'm gonna keep doing this until I have a decent amount of splatters and then I'm gonna create my first clipping mask so I'm just picking my last brush here okay so clipping masks I think are such useful tools and pretty much how you do them is you duplicate the picture that you want to use as the picture in your clipping mask so I right click and I click duplicate layer okay and then I'm gonna put this above that layer I just created with the splatters and then all you have to do is right click your duplicated layer and click create clipping mask I don't think that's very difficult so hopefully you guys could follow um, and pretty much you can see this is how I've created um, my clipping mask with the splatters and it looks so cool but I'm going to be changing this up a little bit because I feel like this image is too clean and the splatters you can kind of see the original picture so going back to my duplicated picture I'm going to use a tool called the liquify tool so to get to that you go to filter and make sure you're on your duplicated layer and down here it's a liquify and you just click that and then it'll take you to a screen where you can start playing with your images um, so here we can just use a bunch of little tools on the side here and the one I'm gonna be using is this one right here and it's the very top one and it's called the Ford warp tool and I'm going to make my brush size around 200 with a brush pressure as 100 and you can just move this around and this is also a really good tool if there's someone that you really don't like but you're too scared to tell them so you can just get their photo and destroy their face and make them really fat so you can see here I'm just having a good old time distorting the photo so it looks a little different and she looks like an absolute beast like she got sucked into a warp or something and then once I'm done I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna right click and create clipping mask and you can see that looks so much cooler 
and I'm going to stretch the photo out a bit by transforming it. So holding Control T, this little thing comes up and I can just drag that out. So now you can see this is the first set of the dispersion effect, I suppose. But you can see it's a little bit messy. So I'm going to go in and clean that up with an eraser. Now going back into my splatter layer, I'm going to select my eraser tool and I'm going to make sure I'm on a hard brush and I'm setting the size to about 80. And I'm just going to raise this where it looks a bit funny. We're not the the whole point of this effect is not to keep it tidy, but to make it look really cool and just completely random. So you can see I've just left the outer portions of the splatters I've created. And then we're going to keep going and I really like to do different layers and layer it up just so it looks way cooler than your like flat one layer splatters. So I'm going to go back into my brush and I'm going to pick some different splatters. By the way, if you don't um if you don't have a splatter brush set or you don't want to go and download one, um you can just use your default brushes. Um you can see there's heaps here, there are these ones, this one's really good, or you can use this one, and they pretty much get the same job done, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to get some new splatters into the photo by creating a new layer, and just as we did before, I'm using a different splatter brush, and I'm just slapping it onto the photo. Again, I'm using some different brushes. So it looks much cooler. You really want to get creative with this thing. You don't want to make it um, look clean or polished. Like the whole point of a splatter dispersion effect is that so it looks like um, a lot of action, a lot of things going on in the photo. And then I'm going to get a bigger sized one just by her head. Sweet. And then as I did before, I'm going to duplicate the original image. Put it above my new spatter layer. And then using the liquify tool like I did before, going to filter, liquify. I'm just going to use the same tool I did before and just make her look like a rubber band. And click OK. And then right click create clipping mask and we have ourselves a new splatter. Again I want this picture a bit bigger so I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. The liquify tool is just well what I like to do personally. Um, if you don't want to do it it's completely up to you. And then I'm gonna fix it up with my eraser tool. Now another great way to um, to actually erase the splatters you don't want is with a splatter brush. So you can go to eraser and then I'm going to use a splatter brush to erase. So you can see this is what it looks like. So I'm pretty much done. I feel like if you kept adding more layers, it would just look cooler and cooler. But I'm going to stop here. You pretty much get the general gist of where this is going. Um, like I said, this is such a basic effect and clipping masks are so incredibly useful. You don't have to use splatter brushes with this at all. Um, you could definitely play it up and use a completely different brush. Like, get creative. There's heaps of other brushes. You can do, like... Um, I don't know, just off the top of my head, you could get this little leaf and you could put her face in it or something. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was very fun and very quick to make. Um, and it's definitely very cool to play with the clipping mask in Photoshop sometimes. It's such an amazing feature. 
So, um, and I'm pretty much going to stop here. Hopefully you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.